I have often wondered, um, it will sound odd, but I really have given some thought to what happens, say, a hundred years from now, when people in the future look at pictures of our present day and notice that lots of people wear jeans that are torn up. I mean, we just look at it as a fact and statement, perhaps, uh, but, but I just wonder, you know, if they don't know the background, what do they, what do they conclude about these people they see in these pictures? I bring this up because there was a practice in Jesus' day, and indeed long before his day, it was called rending your garments, that is, tearing your clothes. People did this. They tore their clothes, but they did it for a particular reason. They did it as an act of, as an outward demonstration of sorrow. So, for example, if you were, um, you were, you were there and someone came up to you and told you tragic news, that, that someone that was very close to you had just died, you would, in that culture, you would immediately tear your clothes. It was an act, this outward visible sign that you were grieved, you were sorrowful. You'll, you'll find this in lots of stories in the Old Testament. There's one, for example, where a king feels like a neighboring king is picking a fight with him, and he's afraid the other king's going to attack. And he's, he's in remorse over this. This is an awful thing. He rends his garment. He tears his clothes. The book of Joel, I don't know if you caught the line. It is, I think, the perfect line for us. That as we begin uh, Ash Wednesday, as we begin Lent, it says, rend your, gar rend your heart, not your garments. Rent your heart, not your gardens. Tear at your heart, don't tear your clothes. What Joel is talking about is something very similar to what Jesus is talking about in the gospel. He's addressing people who go to the show, if you will, of doing religious things. You know, do some sort of outward show, but they do not actually hold it in their heart. Because you can appreciate, you know, uh, just to go back to sorrow from a death. I mean, you, you would know this from your own experience, certainly. You know, when any death is sad, but certainly some uh, deaths are more, you know, harder for you to take. And so you might, in some situation, find yourself where you feel like, well, I'm not actually all that close to this person, but I do feel like I have to put on you know, a show, if you will, of being sad. And so it's very possible in that day and age, you know, people could hear news of someone's death and they could, you know, pretend to be sad. They could tear their clothes, but maybe even inside they're going, good, I'm glad they're gone. So it's possible, this outward sign is supposed to be an outward sign of what's in your heart. But it doesn't have to be. And this is where it comes to us, you know, all these thousands of years later. Because you and I can do exactly the same thing. You know, today you can receive ashes. And you can receive it as an outward sign of the fact that this is Lent and you are going to spend the next several weeks really concentrating on being a disciple of Christ and repenting and doing those things, you, you can do that. Those ashes on your forehead or on the top of your head, they can symbolize what's in your heart. It doesn't have to be that way, of course. You can get ashes on your forehead. You can walk around all day and, 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 and you know, not change anything that you do today. Tomorrow will be the same as will next week. You know, that, the fact that you have ashes doesn't act necessarily reflect what's in your heart. And that's what Joel's line is. Joel, this great prophet, is saying to his people of the day that God is, in that day and age, God is clearly tired of all the show of religion. 
And he was saying to them, look, just don't even bother. Just don't even bother with the tear in the clothes thing. Because it doesn't mean anything anyway anymore. Why don't you do, why don't you do what you really need to do? Why don't you rend your heart? Why don't you be sorrowful for the sins that you have committed? Why don't you commit to doing that? And leave the outward stuff. It doesn't make any difference because as Jesus points out, the outward stuff, that's for you and me. It's the inward stuff that God wants. And so when we, you know, do anything religious, whether it's we just show up to Mass and we get the ashes and, you know, well, i got to get ashes. Or we go to confession because, well, I go the first Friday of every month and even though I don't really think I committed any sins last month, I'll still go. You know, no matter what that is, you know, the outward sign doesn't, you know, you, you give the appearance, the guidance, what's going on in your heart. And so that's the challenge for us this Lent. You know, I've been looking back over my years of Lent. I've had Lent's where I was basically just going through the motions. You know, you give up something for Lent that you never take, use anyway. You know, in my case, it was always uh, Brussels sprouts. Um, you know, you can do that. You can get the ashes, you know, that kind of stuff. Or you can take it seriously. And in my spiritual journey, I've done both. I've had Lent's where, it, I don't know, it, it was just another month in the calendar. And I've had Lent's where I really took it seriously. And, of course, as I look back on it, there's no doubt in my mind which was the right thing to do and which was the best thing for me. And so, if I could just encourage you, this year for Lent, don't, don't. Tear, tear your clothes. Don't, don't rend your garments. Don't do all the visible things just to do them. Rend your heart. Draw closer to God. Because you always want to remember that, that from the psalm, be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Always remember that God is willing, able, wants to desperately to forgive us and draw close to us. And so as we enter Lent, and we rend our hearts, know that what's waiting for us is all this love from our Heavenly Father.